Hello, good morning, good morning, and good morning. Welcome, and welcome, and welcome. Welcome to today's morning devotion. It's the 12th of June in the year 2020. Very wonderful and beautiful year that the Lord has given unto us. Even though with unusual happenings, we give glory to the Lord. We thank God for the entire week from Monday to Friday. Today is the Friday, the 12th of June in the year 2020. Praise the Lord. My name is uh, Michelle Carson. I'm speaking to you from the city of Rumia, north of Poland. In today's devotion, we will be looking at you know the topic that says, what do you do when there is nothing to do? Hallelujah. What do you do when there is nothing to do? And you know that I like to say this, that you already have the first and the most important miracle, which is the gift of life. That you are awake this morning and that you are able to hear me this morning and you're able to see me this morning. And you know, it is by the mercies of God. And and the gift of life is the greatest miracle that anyone can ever receive from God. So I am thankful to God that I'm alive today. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful to be alive. It is not because of who I am. It is not because of what I've done. It is absolutely by the mercies of God. And that's why I give him all the glory, and I give him all the praise, and I give him all the honor and adoration. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's get into the subject of today. What do you do? when there is nothing to do. You know, many a times, many people, including me, have come to a situation where you do not know anything else to do. You've done all that you know. you followed every instruction that you have ever received, advice is cancelled from friends, lovers, admirators, everybody that you ever know, admirers, everybody that you ever know, you followed their instruction. You do what and then you come to the point where you don't know what else to do. That's where what we are going to be talking about to you. What do you do when there is nothing to do? It's a recipe for crisis because we are in a crisis season. We have been, you know, hit by this unknown, unusual virus called the coronavirus that has become a pandemic attacking the whole nations of the world and the numbers in some places are increasing daily and the calamities and the havoc he has done to nations, economies and families is, you know, is great and many people are in a position of I don't know what, to, what else to do and that's the subject matter of our Bible in our morning devotion today. Take up your Bible. Our Bible reading is taken from the book of Mark, chapter number 5. Uh, we will be reading from verse 21 to 24, and then we will skip and read verse 35 to 43. Come with me, take up your Bible, and let us read. The Bible says in the book of Mark, chapter number 20, chapter 5, verse 21, it says, And when Jesus was passed over again by the sheep unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And verse 22 says, And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And verse 23 says, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay your hands, thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Verse 24. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Let's skip to verse 35. For one of time. And while he was yet 
while he yet spake, they came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept, and wailed greatly. And he was, when he was come in, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado, and weep? The damsel is not dead, but he sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, but when he had put them all out, he takes the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him, and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talita kumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straight away the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given to her to eat. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless the reading of the word of God this morning. I'm excited, like I said. The topic this morning is, what do you do when there is nothing to do? Uh, in, in this story this morning, the Bible says that uh, Jesus, you know, had an encounter with a man who was a ruler of the synagogue, uh, uh, let me say, a, a person that was in charge of the church, <laughs> synagogue as a church in that time. Uh, he was a ruler of the synagogue, somebody who was religious enough and to be in charge of the synagogue. Uh, I don't know whether it was administrative or maintenance or whatever, but the Bible said he was in charge of the synagogue. His name was Jairus. He specifically mentioned his name is Jer you know, was Jairus. And the situation here is that Jairus had a 12-year-old daughter who suddenly took ill. Uh -huh, I'm thinking now of uh, coronavirus. <laughs> Who suddenly took ill and then was at the point uh, this condition was very bad and luckily for Jairus Jesus was in the neighborhood and so the Bible says Jairus without wasting of time uh, went to Jesus and asked Jesus please can you come to my house my daughter is in you know in a very bad shape she is taken ill and she is, you know, this sickness is deadly. Please come. And, you know, for once, Jesus did not argue with, you know, with Jairus. He did not say anything. It's okay, let's go. And during the process where Jesus was going, that's where we find the story of the woman with the issue of blood from verse 25 down to verse 34. And then... So, so perhaps, you know, I'm thinking that while Jesus was on the way, the Bible said, multitude, a great number of people followed Jesus and they were, you know, kind of, you know, peeping and touching and trying to get used to, let me, who is this the Jesus? And the Bible said a lot of people were thronging him. They were, they was, he was surrounded by people. And it was indeed during one of these, uh, uh, you know, people pushing and trying to get to close to Jesus, to touch him, just to feel him and see is he real, is he the, what kind of a person is this, that the woman who was bleeding for 12 years came behind and touched with the difference. And the Bible says he touched, for she has said that she will touch the hem of his garment and she will be made whole. And, you know, and this woman was instantly healed of a 12-year incurable disease or sickness. And the Bible said Jesus at this point in time stopped and asked Peter who and the rest of the disciples who has touched him. 
and um, Peter and answered and said, well, Master, a lot of folks have been touching you since we started, you know, moving. And so how do we know? How do we know? Because this is, this is a full crowd. How do we know who's touching you? But Jesus insisted that somebody has touched him with a difference. And the Bible says this woman that was bleeding for 12 years, when she realized that instantly the bleeding had stopped and she was healed of that incurable disease, then the Bible says she, you know, showed up herself and, and he said, Master, I'm the one who touched you. And he said, Woman, behold of thy plague. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. It was at this point in time, just while Jesus was speaking that to the woman in, in verse 35, that the Bible says somebody came from uh, Jairus' house. And, you know, he came with the news and the report that says, well, uh, Mr. Jairus, mm, 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 this, is, this is so bad. They, you know, there is no need, Abakashara. There is no need for the master to come again. Your daughter is already dead. Is already dead. Too late. Too late to do anything. What do you do when there is nothing to do? What do you do when you have done everything that you think and that you suppose to do? Now put yourself in the position of, you know, Jairus. Jairus would have been, you know, uh, hopeful just for a while. For a short period of time because when this sickness took, took hold of her daughter and she he found out that Jesus was in the neighborhood and he went to Jesus. I mean, this was the last call. He went to Jesus. Before this time, he may have administered, you know, all kind of drugs and all kind of, you know, therapy, whatever people advise, you know, because, I mean, this is a 12-year-old girl. You can put yourself, you know, in a position of your 12-year-old daughter taking ill is so bad that, you know, you are in a desperate situation and you're trying to do everything that anybody says. So give him water, do this, sit, sit her up, do that. And Jonas would have done that. And luckily, as I would say, in that, on that day, you know, Jesus was in the neighborhood. So uh, somebody said, well, you know, you know about Jesus. He's in the neighborhood. And Jonas said, come on. And the Bible said, Jairus came to Jesus. And there was no argument. He said, please come. My little daughter is lying down sick on today. The situation is so bad. Please come and lay hands on her. I believe if you lay hands on her, she will be made whole. And there was no argument at all. There was no, Jesus did not say, and said, let's go at once. But the Bible said, while they were still on the way, uh, somebody came from Jairus' house and said to Jairus, there is no need for Jesus to come again. Somebody came from Jairus' house and said, it is too late to do anything. It is over. There is nothing you can do anymore. Your daughter is already dead. All hope is gone. Nothing can be done anymore. It is too late. What do you do in a situation whereby you find yourself that you've done everything that you needed to do and there is nothing to do again? And it, it looks like it is too late. It looks like all hope is gone. It looks like the, you know, you've exhausted all the skill, all the knowledge, and every advice and counsel that you ever received. You have followed them. You have followed this instruction. You have followed the doctor's advice. You have taken the medication timely as you were asked to. At the end of the day, the situation is not getting better, it's getting worse, and it comes to the point of complete hopelessness. It is dead, a dead situation, a situation that there is nothing you can do again, a situation that, you know, you think that it is all over, nothing can be done. The Bible says somebody came from the house to inform Jairus and said, well, there is no need to bring Jesus to the house. I'm sorry about it. How many times have you heard the doctors and, and a medical expert that come out from the surgery room, come out from and say, I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. When they start, 
you know, when doctors start speaking to you, say, I'm sorry, <laughs> you know that the next sentence or the next words are not going to be that kind of word. You know, they, they, it will not be words of kindness and words of, I'm sorry, we lost him. I'm sorry, we lost her. I'm sorry, there is nothing we can do. I'm sorry, we have done everything that we know how to do, but the situation is not good. Hallelujah. This is what I want to talk to you about. What do you do when there is nothing to do? What do you do when all hope is gone? What do you do when you have exhausted every expertise and knowledge and counsel and know-how? What do you do when there is nothing to do? Walk with me this morning. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that Jesus answered the, when Jesus heard what was said, to Jairus. And in verse 10, he says, As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Other, you know, parts of the gospel will say something. And Jairus said, Lord, help my unbelief. You know, I don't know how to believe again. Pastor, I have believed. I have been believing God. I, I have been trusting God. What do you do? when there is nothing to do. And that's what we're going to be looking at this morning. What would mean? What do you do in in a season like this? What do you do with the, all the calamity and all that is happening? And what do you do when you have exhausted everything that you know how to do? What do you do in the middle of deep crisis? Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles with me. You know, to the book of uh, Ephesians, chapter number six. You know, Paul says something. Say, having done all, stand like couples. Having done all, when you have done everything that you need to do, when there is nothing else to do, just stand. And that's what I remember exactly. That's what God told Moses. If you, when they have left Egypt. When they have left Egypt and they were, you know, and they have succeeded to 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 break the power of Pharaoh and they and they and they gone with the gold and now they are faced with the Red Sea and the the angry, you know, armies of Pharaoh, you know, coming down against them. And the Bible says Moses and the people were were, were in a state of deep crisis. You know, you know, they, like they used to say, between the devil and the deep blue sea. So they were in the middle of here is the Red Sea. Behind us, you know, is Pharaoh. You know, with this army who never wanted us to go, and who whom the their firstborn of from human firstborn to animal firstborn, everything firstborn has died because of us. And he is angry and coming in full force against them. And Moses, the Bible says the people, you know, begin to be in a state of, you know, crisis and, and, and fear. And God said to Moses, stand still. When you are in a crisis situation, having done everything that you need to do, all what you need to do is to stand still. You know, stand, the Bible said, God said to Moses, stand still and see the salvation that comes from God. Stand still and see and experience the power of God. And that's what you need to do. You need to know how to stand still. Having done all, stand still. The book of Ephesians chapter number 6. You know, open with me to Ephesians chapter number 6. Ephesians chapter number 6. And, and look at verse verses 13. Verse 13 onward. Verse 13. And it says, you know, uh, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. An evil day is a day when you have exhausted your knowledge, when you have exhausted your skill, when you have done all what you know how to do according to the book, when you have followed all the instruction, all the advice you have taken, you know, you have not missed the mark. And Paul said, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand, stand, 
will you have done all? Will you have done? Stand still. That's what God says most of the time when people are in the midst of crisis, when people have exhausted their strength, when people have exhausted their knowledge and, and, and their skill and their know-how and their capacity and capability. When God will speak, he will say, stand now. It is okay. You've done all what you needed to do. It's okay. You've consulted with the best. It's okay. You administered it correctly and timely. But now it is time for me stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But the, you know, it, it is not easy to stand still. How do you know you are standing still? How do you stand still? You know, how do you stand there? Because this is what you need in, in an evil day, in a day where situation and circumstances are out of your own control, in a time and a season where, you know, things are out of control, like we're living right now, in a time and a season in this year when situations is out of control when the governments of nations do not know exactly what to do when people do not know what to do the scientists are on it in, in real time they don't have a solution they are working 24 hours in in the laboratories trying to figure out trying to see which which one will come out as a vaccine and yet the menace and yet the menace is taking place the virus is devastating is destroying life I stand still in a day like this but the point is how do I stand still do I know how to stand still and that's what we're talking about this morning stand still and see what do you do when there is nothing to do stand still and see the salvation of God but you know pastor you know I hear that I understand that but how do I stand still Am I, are you standing still? Are you standing? Or you are in the state of, you know, panicking, you know, you know, of fear, you know, discouragement, confusion, you know, because you you can say you are standing, but you are discouraged. You say you can, you are standing, but you are confused. You can say you are standing, but you are in fear. You are desperate and you don't know what to do. Are you standing? We want to know how to stand according to the scriptures. So that when we face crisis like we are facing now, and when we have done all that we need to do, you know, and uh, all that we know how to do, then we can just stand. Like God will say to Moses, stand still. Because it is in standing still that we will know the exactly the next thing to do. He says, stand still and know that I am the Lord. Abba it is when you properly stand still that then you will know. If you're not properly standing still, then you will not know. He says, stand still and know that I am the Lord thy God. Stand still. When you are in that position of standing still and you are properly standing still, then you will know. God, then you will know. He said, then you will know that I am the Lord your God. But if you're not properly standing still, then you will not know. Hallelujah. So that's what that's the, that's what we want to be able to examine this morning in a short period of time that we have. So let's move on there. It says in Ephesians chapter number, uh, you know, 12 verse, and chapter 6 verse 13, it says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. In verse 14, it says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So the first Standing position is that we should have our loins gated with truth. The loins talks about the, the middle section of your body. You know, that's that's the kind of the loins where you put on the belt, where the belt hold on to the skirt or the blouse, where the belt hold on to the trousers or the shirt. That is where the 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 loins and in the loins are very vital you know organs like the kidney in the loins lies the reproductive system in the loins i can go on within the loins lies the womb that's where it is so they are vital you know places you know vital organs within the loins area and so it is important that the bible says stand with your loins gathered with truth and 
you know what it means exactly is that hold on to the truth of the word of God no matter how it is let your loins be gathered with truth hold on to the truth of the word because the loins is what hold the upper part of the body and the lower part of the body together so it needs the foundation of truth and what is the, what did Jesus say Jesus said in the book of John chapter 8 verse 32 he says and he shall know the truth truth. Let me open that. Let's take up your Bible. Let's get there. Hallelujah. John chapter 8 verse, verse 32. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So when you stand with your loins gathered with truth, it means that you stand acknowledging, continually acknowledging the truth of the word of God. Never let the truth of the word of God depart from you. In the middle of crisis, do not be so confused that you forget what the word of God has said. Jesus said, and he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make hapo shatana. The truth shall make you free. The truth has the capacity to make you free. So you cannot, in your standing position, you are to continue to hold on to the truth of the word of God by the stripes of Jesus. I have been made whole. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You have to stand you know, upon the truth. You have to stand continually believing in the truth. Continually believing in the truth because it's only the truth that has the capacity and the capability to make you free. And he shall know the truth. The word know is, has you know, a deep meaning. It's not just head knowledge. It's intimate knowledge. The first time the word no is used in the scripture. Uh, theologians talk about the, the, the law of the first mention, which states that, you know, you know, if you really want to know the meaning of the word in the Bible, find out the first time that has been mentioned. The first time the word mentioned, uh, the word no is mentioned, is found in the book of Genesis, where it talks about that Adam knew his wife. He talks about an intimate relationship. So in the time of crisis, you need to develop a more intimate relationship with the truth of the word of God. You need to delve yourself into the truth of the word. You need to immerse yourself continually. Develop intimate relationship. Get deeper with the word of God. For the Bible says, and you shall know when you come to the place where you are intimate, when you come to the place where you are completely immersed and submerged in the word of God. The Bible says the truth has the capacity to make you free. It has the capacity to make you. The truth will make you. The truth will, will make you. It will make you free. It will make you free when you develop intimate relationship with the truth of the word of God. When you submit and immerse yourself into the truth. So the standing, the number one standing position is stand having your loins gathered with the truth of the word of God, which is to say continue to immerse yourself and submit yourself in, in the word of God. He said to Joshua, thou shalt meditate on this word of the Lord. The word of the Lord shall de not depart from you day and night. <laughs> that is submerging and immersing yourself into the word of God. You will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. That is the number one standing position. Paul says, stand, stand. Therefore, having your loins gathered with the truth, having your loins get the number one standing position in the middle of crisis, immerse yourself, submerge yourself with the word of God, get more intimate, Eat the word of God, drink the word of God, dream the word of God, sleep the word of God, talk the word of God. You know, that's that's it. that's a complete and total immersion. Get intimate, and ye shall know Lambro Sokotayama, and ye shall know the truth, Liprando Soto, and ye shall know the truth. When you get intimate, when you get submerged and immersed with the word of God, the Bible said the word of God has power. The word of God has power. The word of God has power. It will make you free. Stand still and know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. The number one standing position is to, you know, stand with your loins gathered with the truth. 
submit and immerse yourself with the truth of the word of God. Get more intimate, you know, with the word of God. Number two, it says stand. Stand, you know, having, stand with, you know, what did he say there? Stand, let me read that again. Stand, <clears throat> having your loins gathered with truth and having on a breeze plate of righteousness. <laughs> the second position is stand without compromise. Stand in righteousness. Stand in righteousness. There is a serious tendency to compromise in the in the evil day, in, in the time of crisis, to begin to apply solutions and, and attempt to apply solutions that are contrary to the word of God. Many people on, on the day of crisis will consult an oracle. Many people in the day of crisis will go to the witch doctor. Many people, because they say, somebody will say, well, you've tried orthodox medication. It seems not to be working. There is one witch doctor there. There is one voodoo doctor there. There is one, you know, uh, magician there. There is one, you know, you know, person there. And you know that that person is not operating, you know, in, under the influence and the direction of the Spirit of God. Like Saul, in the day of crisis, he went to consult the witch of Endor. Uh, he compromised because he did not know how to stand in righteousness. Stand, stand in righteousness. Stand having you on the breast plate of righteousness, Librando Koshataba. You stand in righteousness. You stand without compromising. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about the Hebrew, the three Hebrew children who said to Nebuchadnezzar, we will not bow. If the God that we serve do not deliver us, it is better that we die in righteousness. We die in right standing. O King Nebuchadnezzar, we will not compromise. We will not bow to this, you know, golden image that you have made of. We will stand in righteousness. We know the God that we serve. If the God that we serve make a choice, he's a sovereign God. He has the power to deliver us. If he does not want to deliver us, we will die. But instead of that, we will not compromise. Stand in righteousness. Having your, you know, having on the breastplate of righteousness, in right standing, in the day of crisis, it is possible that you may compromise Compromise. It is possible that you will begin to apply solutions that are not, you know, in line with the word of God as a believer. But, you know, Paul admonishes that in the evil day, you need to stand immersing yourself in the truth and submerging yourself in the truth of the word of God and stand in an uncompromising disease, you know, position. In the day of crisis, in the day when there is nothing to do, when you've done everything, stand believing the word of God. Be ready ready to die, you know, believing the word of God. Be ready to die standing upon the truth and to compromise. Many compromise. But the three Hebrew children did not compromise. Daniel did not compromise. He continued to pray. Even when there was a decree, he continued his ministry. He continued to do what he believed and knew was right, to pray. Pray without ceasing. He continued to do that. And it was reported. And he knew that the consequences of disobeying the decree, you know, was to be put in the lion's den. But he said, well, you know what? If it's the lion's den, I am ready to go. But I cannot compromise the truth that I know. And so standing, putting on the breastplate of righteousness is standing, you know, without compromise. Hallelujah. Standing in a position of, you know, that you do not want to compromise. Look at the book of Isaiah, chapter number 54. What does the word of God say to us there? He says something like this. Open with me. I want you to see it by yourself. Isaiah chapter number 54. You know, you know the scripture. Look at, let's start from verse 14. Hallelujah. In righteousness, in righteousness thou shalt be a, you know, that in shall be established, thou shalt be far from oppression, and in thou shalt be thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. 
Let me read that again. I'm getting excited. I'm, you know, I'm feeling the presence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He said, in righteousness, thou shalt be what established. The word established means to be set up on a fame and a solid foundation. <laughs> when you stand in right, when you stand putting on the breastplate of righteousness, the Bible says you will be established. You will be set on a fame and a solid foundation. Hallelujah. You'll be set up on a fame and solid foundation and say you will be free you will be far from oppression when you are when you stand in putting on the breastplate of righteousness the bible says you will be established set on a fame and solid foundation and oppression the oppression that which the enemy the attack the the, the arrows the evil arrows that the enemy is shooting the bible says you will be far from it you will be far from oppression and you will not fear from any terror, because it will not be able to come near you. When you stand in righteousness, righteousness is a defense. The Bible says you shall be established. It says in verse 15, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather against thee shall fall for thy sake. About Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you stand putting on the breastplate of righteousness, the Bible says you will be far from oppression. And you know, for those who gather against you, it's not your problem. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. He said you will be far from oppression. And those who gather against you, if not by the Lord, they will be scattered by themselves. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. For your sake, they will be scattered. He, the Bible says in verse 16, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and bringing forth an instrument for his work. I have created the waster to destroy. But listen, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you you know, you shall condemn in judgment. Hallelujah. He said, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And he said, their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. When you stand in an uncompromising position, the Bible says, no weapon in righteousness. So this, the last verse, uh, the second to the last verse 17 is effective because of verse 14. In righteousness thou shalt be established, hallelujah, and you'll be far from oppression. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You will not fear of any terror. You will, that, is the, that is the second position of standing. You stand, number one, with your loins girded with truth submerging and imagining yourself into the truth of the word of God. He shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Number two, stand putting on the breastplate of righteousness, which is to say that, you know, you stand in an uncompromising position. Be like the three Hebrew children. If this is going to kill you, let it kill you, but you will not compromise. They say to Nebuchadnezzar, no matter what you do, no matter, hit the furnace 21 times over. The Bible said the furnace was heated so much that the people that even threw them inside died. <laughs> but when they got into the fire, hallelujah, Nebuchadnezzar saw four people. These guys, these guys, they were not burning. They were rejoicing. They were singing in, in the midst of the fire. And I can see how Nebuchadnezzar was, you know, flabbergasted, so surprised. He said, I didn't even put three people. I think I'm seeing four people. Look at them rejoicing. The, and the Bible says he called them up. Stand in an uncompromising position. Don't compromise. Number three, how do you stand? He said, you know, and, you know, stand with your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. Stand with your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Stand by continuing to testify to the goodness and, and the love of God. You know, and the salvation that comes. Stand, stand by maintaining your testimony. Your testimony. Stand by being a witness. Continue to be a witness to the truth. Continue to testify. You know, you know, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, open with me to Revelation chapter number 12, verse 11. Let me show that to you. Revelation chapter number 12, verse 11. 
And the Bible says, and they overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives even unto death. That's, that's how you stand. That's how you stand with your feet shut with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Continue to declare, you know, and testify of God's goodness. Continue to declare and testify and be a witness. Do not allow the situation to shut you down. And you are not able to say, my God is good. The Jesus saved me. Salvation belongs unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Do not allow any situation to rob you of the testimony. You know, maintain your testimony. Maintain your testimony. Continue to be a witness. Be ready to testify of the goodness of God all the time. No matter the crisis. No matter the situation. Remember what God has done for you. Remember that he sent his son Jesus Christ to die for your sake. If the, the Bible says if God freely gave us his son, what else will he not give? us hmm. what else he gave us his only begotten son that is the best and the dearest and the most expensive he gave it to us while we were yet sinners while we did not seek him he gave it to us so what will not god give it to us what is it that god will not give to us hallelujah so stand continuing to testify to the goodness and the love of god and salvation that is in the name of jesus and salvation that comes from jesus christ alone stand to testify of that continue with your testimony maintain your testimony the bible said they overcome him by the blood of the lamb the sacrifice of the lamb of jesus the lamb of god which is jesus christ and by the word of their testimony do th these two things continue to maintain that salvation healing and deliverance is through the name of jesus is found in the name of continue to proclaim and re and declare your redemptive rights in the name of jesus christ continue to maintain your testimony testify of the goodness of the lord hallelujah hallelujah continue to you know testify of the goodness of the Lord. continue to declare his love and his salvation maintain stand with your feet shut with the preparation of the gospel of peace hallelujah that's how you stand that's how you stand you know number number three i think that is number three that's how you stand stand by continuing to testify to god's goodness love and salvation and we have that back of scripture number four for the want of time stand in faith continue to believe you know he says he says he says and, and this is what how paul put it above all taking on the shield of faith where would you shall be able to quench all the fairy deaths of the wicked hallelujah stand in faith and not in doubt and that's what jesus said to the to jairus only believe <laughs> only believe jairus say they say it is over i said just believe just continue to believe you came here to call me to put to, to heal your daughter continue to believe that your daughter is 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 going to be all right continue to believe don't believe in any other report don't believe any negative report continue to believe that your daughter is well it is well with your daughter it is well with my daughter Cont only believe in what you you started believing don't allow the circumstances to change your faith paul will say is stand therefore having stand stand you know taking on the shield of faith where would you are able to quench all the fairy darts of the enemy what does it mean to stand in faith you know in faith in, in, in taking on the shield of faith what does it mean to stand in faith let's see how abraham our father of faith stood in faith look at the book of romans chapter number four Follow me to the book of Romans chapter number 4. Hallelujah. Let's read from verse 18 to 21. Verse 18 to 21. The Bible said this is what it means to stand in faith and to put on the shield of, taking the shield of faith. Stand taking on the shield of faith so that you can quench all the fiery doubt in the darts of the enemy. All the negative words, all the negative diagnosis, all the negative symptoms. This is how you, you stand to quench it. He said, the Bible says, Abraham believed, who believed, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. The Bible says, Abraham believed in hope against hope. He believed when there was nothing to believe. 
when there was no more hope. Jairus, your daughter is dead. There is no need for the master to come again. Uh -huh. Jesus said, continue to believe. <laughs> Only believe. Abraham believed in hope against hope. When there was nothing to hope for, he continued to hope. You know, because the Bible says at this point in time, he himself is a hundred years old and his wife is 90 years old. And by scientific deduction, women attend menopause at the age of 40. So Sarah would have attended menopause twice. He would have, she would have gotten master in monopause. <laughs> if there's anything like that he, because she has attended it twice first time 40 years and the second time it's going to be 80 years and this is post you know postgraduate diploma in monoposity another 10 you know, 10 years has been added but the bible says abraham believed in hope against hope that it shall be Kabo it shall be according to that which According to the word of God, it shall be according, because the Bible says heavens and earth shall pass away, but the word that goes out of the mouth of God shall not go unfulfilled. He said, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are the ways of God higher. You don't know the way God will do it. Stand, stand, put, stand, 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 taking on the shield of faith. Believe in what God has said, no matter the circumstances. Believe in what God has said, no matter the situation. Believe in what what God has said, no matter how you feel, believe in what God has said, no matter what people say, no matter the doctor's report, believe. He believed in hope against hope that he will be the father of many nations, according to the according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. Look at verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he did not consider, La he did not consider his body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Ceres' womb. And he did not consider, don't consider your feelings. Don't consider the symptoms. Don't consider what people say. Don't consider the doctor's report. The only thing that you need to consider is the word of God. Don't consider anything else. The Bible said, the Bible said he did not consider his body. His body, you know, uh, factually, his body was dead. Factually, you know, the womb of Sarah was dead. You know, by every scientific deductions, he would have been, you know, they would have said there is no hope. It is practically impossible for a woman of 90 years to be able to, 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 to become pregnant. That would have been practically impossible. But the Bible says that, you know, he continued to believe in hope against hope, that it shall be according to that which was spoken, you know, you know, and not being weak in faith. He did not consider it. This is how you, you don't focus on the situation. You don't focus on the symptoms. You don't focus on the feelings. You don't focus on the emotions. Looking unto Jesus, who is Jesus, the word of God, the author and the finisher of your faith. Continue to believe. Take on the shield of faith. Where would you, you be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. This is how you stand. You stand focusing. You stand believing in hope against hope. You stand considering what God has said more than what people say, more than what the circumstances is say, more than what the situation is saying. You stand believing. Libro Koshataba. Let's, let's move on there. Let's read. It says, Stagger not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in verse 20, was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. So every day he woke up, say, Father, I thank you for my wife, the mother of many nations. I thank you for, for my wife giving birth to my son. Lord, I give you glory. I bless your mighty name for my son that you're giving me through my dearly beloved wife giving glory to God. That's how you continue to stand. That's what faith is. Faith is giving glory to God. Faith is praising God in, you know, in situations where people think that they're supposed not to be any praise. That's what faith is. Hallelujah. That's what faith is. Faith is giving glory to God in situations and circumstances that nobody can understand. So the Bible says, 
that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. How do you demonstrate your standing in faith? By giving glory to God. Hallelujah. By saying it is well. It is well. I give God the glory. Hallelujah. I remember that widow whose son was dead. She took the horse and then she rode down to Elisha the prophet. And when Elisha saw her, the way she was speeding on the horse, he, you know, he sent his servant Gehazi and said, go, meet that woman and find out why is she on that stop speed. I perceive that something is, is, is not right. And the Bible says, when that woman came, Gehazi asked, my master said, I should ask you, is everything all right? And the Bible says, she answered, it is well. <laughs> it is well. <laughs> it is well. Tell somebody, it is well. I believe it is well. It is well with my soul. It is well with my job. It is well with my body. It is well with my business. Never, never, that's how you give glory to God, standing in faith. The Bible says Abraham, you know, continued to give glory to God. In verse 21, I'm being fully persuaded, totally convinced that what God has promised, he was able to do. Hallelujah. He, you know, you have to totally believe and be convinced that what God says shall come to pass. Faith is taking risk in the name of God. Being convinced of what God says and going out to do it because God said it. Hallelujah. 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 What does it mean to stand? Let's move on. It says, above all, you know, taking on the shield of faith, we've done that. Number five, and take the helmet of salvation. So you stand, you know, by putting on the helmet of salvation. Stand wearing your helmet of salvation, which is to continue to believe in the truth of the word of God you have learned and been convicted of. That's how you stand. That's what the helmet of salvation. Continue to believe in the word of God that you have learned and you've been convicted of. Many people, their convictions change in the time of crisis. They are no longer convinced and convicted that the word of God is true because of what they are going through. And that's why they compromise. So they remove their helmet of salvation. What did Paul say to Timothy? This is what Paul said to Timothy. In a time like this, open with me to the book of Second Timothy. Let's go to Second Timothy. Let's find what Second Timothy chapter number 3. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter number three. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter number three. Look at verse 14. Hallelujah. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Hallelujah. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, and for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Hallelujah. This is how you, how you stand, putting on your helmet of salvation. Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, continue to believe. Don't allow circumstances, don't allow situations, don't allow crisis to make you compromise, to make you say, well, I'm not sure what God says, and not sure what the Bible says. Is this thing that the Bible says is true? He said, continue in the things which you have learned and you, you have been assured of. Continue in the assurance of the word of God. Continue to believe what the word of God says. Don't remove your helmet of salvation. Put on the helmet of salvation. Put on the helmet of salvation. Paul said, take the helmet of salvation. This is how you stand. Taking the helmet of salvation. By putting on, continually believing what you have learned and been assured of. Knowing with the truth that you started with, continue in the truth. Don't let the situation make you compromise the truth. Don't let it. He said, as a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures. Don't, don't let today's situation make you begin to think that the Bible is no longer true. He said, all Scripture is given by the inspiration. Don't let what is happening in the world today, don't let, you know, you know, 
you know the changes in the world system today makes you begin to think that the scripture is no longer true that is a lie of the devil he wants you to remove the helmet of salvation stand putting on continually wearing the helmet of salvation and what did he say last lastly he says stand and with the word with the sword of the spirit which is the word of god stand with the sword Take stand with the sword of the spirit. Pull out your sword of the spirit, which is, you know, stand by continually confessing the truth. Continually confessing the truth. Continually confessing the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Confess the word of God. Speak the word of God. Declare the word of God. Decree the word of God. Answer every situation by the word of God. That's confess the truth. Confess the truth. You know, believe the truth and confess it let you speak with your mouth the truth don't just believe in your heart the bible said abraham believed he was giving glory he spoke it out giving glory to god standing side by side with the word of god believing the word of god even when the situation with the circumstances will say no abraham will stand and say it shall be according to that which the lord has given you are the mother of many nations come here my darling mother of many nations he will she, he will wake up in the morning and say Sarah, the mother of my child, the mother of many nations. And people will be looking and say, which child is he talking about? He said, it shall be according to that which was spoken. Stand confessing the truth. The Bible says in, in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 18, open with me there. Let me just read it for you once more time. Because my time is, you know, is, is, is running up. Proverbs chapter number 18. Look at verse 20 and 21. Hallelujah. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love, you know, it shall eat the fruit of thereof. Continue to confess the truth. How is it, my brother? It is well. How is it, my sister? It is well. How is the circumstances? It is well. It is well. I give glory to God. How is it doing? I give glory to God. How is your business doing? I give glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Giving glory to God. Stand confessing the truth. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Don't compromise the truth of the word of God. Don't allow the circumstances to change. To change your position. Stand. Having done all stand. What do you do when there is nothing to do? What do you do when there is nothing to do? You say, what Paul said, what you do is to stand. The scripture says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Another scripture says, stand still and know. <laughs> so you stand still if you want to witness, if you want to experience the salvation that comes from God, the deliverance that comes from God, the healing that comes from God. You have to stand still and you will see God in action. Stand still and you will know that God is the ruler of the heavens and the earth. That the God that you serve, you know, is the God of the impossible. That there is nothing that is impossible with God. The God that you serve. How do you stand? And Paul says stand in the book of Ephesians is chapter 6. He says verse 13 to 17. He says, wherefore take on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. Having done all, stand. Stand therefore with your loins get with the truth hallelujah which is to say hold on to the truth of the word of god hallelujah stand you know putting having your breastplate of righteousness which is to say stand without compromise in righteousness thou shalt be established and you will be free from oppression no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper every tongue that rises against you in judgment you will condemn it hallelujah Hallelujah. Stand with your feet shut with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What does it mean? It means stand by continuing to testify to God's goodness and love and salvation. And the Bible says, and they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, which is the sacrifice of, the, of God for us on the cross of Calvary, sacrificing his son. And with the word of the testimony, your word of testimony, your experience with God, stand continually declaring that jesus christ is the is the only way the truth and the life that jesus christ is the lamb of god without christ there is no salvation stand continually testifying of the truth that's what it means 
there hallelujah stand with stand above all stand he says stand taking on the shield of faith what does he mean continue to believe you know by giving glory to god abraham believed in hope against hope that it shall be according to that which was spoken and the bible says he staggered not at the promise of god giving glory to god hallelujah so that's how you stand you stand you know you know you stand giving glory believing when there is nothing to believe because you know you believe the word of god when the circumstances and the situation are all against you when the facts are against you stand on the side of the word of god hallelujah stand believing the word of god hallelujah put on stand wearing your helmet of salvation hallelujah what does it mean it means your helmet will continue to believe in the truth of the word of God that you have learned and been convicted to that's that's what you know convicted of that's what Paul wrote to Timothy <coughs> he wrote to Timothy in second Timothy chapter 3 he said the truth that you have learned from the childhood you know continue in that truth don't let anything take you out from the truth because all scripture is given don't let somebody say the Bible is outdated that is the lie of the devil continue to believe the word of God hallelujah Stand by confessing the truth, which is, you know, taking off the sword of the spirit. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Jesus said, if you shall say to the mountain, be thou removed. Stand confessing the truth. I am healed. I am delivered. Hallelujah. Give glory to the Lord this morning. Thank you, mighty Father. Close your eyes now, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord. We give you glory, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for a glorious week. A Lord that you've taken us through this week, providing, sustaining, protecting, healing, delivering us. Thank you, mighty Father. We give you praise and honor and adoration. Lord, we thank you for this weekend. Thank you for the great and the mighty things that you're doing in our life in this season. Lord, we stand upon the word. We declare that we will not compromise. We declare that we will continually submerge and immerse ourselves into the truth of the word of God. We declare that we will not compromise. We will not remove our helmet of salvation. We will continually confess the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty Father. Lord, help us to apply these principles of your word in every situation that we may face. In the name of Jesus Christ. Teach us, Holy Spirit, to take hold of this revelation this morning and rule in, and let it rule and reign in our life. Even in this season of crisis where many are confused, Lord, help us to stand. Stand to see your salvation. Stand to know that you are the Lord God Almighty. And let your name continually be glorified in our lives and circumstances. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give glory to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Tell somebody I'm standing. I am standing no matter what. I will not compromise. Hallelujah. I will not compromise. I will continually immerse myself in the truth of the word of God. I will continually confess and wear my helmet of salvation. Hallelujah. I will continually, I will continually testify of the goodness of the Lord. I will stand without compromise. I will stand with my lungs, gathered with the truth, because I know the truth will make me free at the end of the day in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We give glory to the Lord this morning and thank you for being a part of this, you know, devotion today. I will see you again on Monday in the morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Many of you have asked continually, how do we support, you know, your work in, of this ministry? Well, I declare to you that we are missionaries on the Denikasin Kingdom Ministries. With headquarters in Houston, Texas. Hallelujah. And that's where all your donations and support for this ministry, you know, it will go if you, you know, as you want to support us, the information will be there. And later today, you know, there is, a, you know, a, a program that is called Relevant Pulpit by our apostolic covering and father, Apostle Dr. Dana Carson, will be aired, you know, live on on, on this channel and the, on the YouTube channel. So please, the information is going to be on the screen. Follow it. Our phone number is there on the screen. If you need any further prayer and counseling, 
please don't hesitate to call, text, or WhatsApp us. Our number is there live. And if you need to see us, just let us know. Now, please take time and listen to these announcements. And let the Almighty God bless you as you listen to this announcement. Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you on Monday. Have a beautiful week. The world is full of people who are hurting. Many live their lives in fear, shame, loneliness, depression, and the list goes on and on. What if I told you that you could help change the lives of hurting people? Would you do it? Most people really desire to make an impact in the lives of others around the world. They just don't have a context that supports their desire. Well, Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries invites you to do what you've always wanted to do. Help change lives around the world. What exactly is Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries doing to change lives? The Bible says in Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries is taking the good news of the gospel of the kingdom around the world through television, radio, and the Kingdom Reformation Crusades, and people's lives are being changed. How can you help change lives? When you sow a monthly seed of $20 or more, you help share the love of God to the masses. You help send missionaries throughout the world to impact communities for God's kingdom. And most importantly, you help win souls for the kingdom of God. All it takes is your monthly seed of $20 or more, and you can help change the world. To partner with Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries today, simply go online to drdanacarson.com forward slash partners or call 281-824-4190. That's 281-824-4190. You can also mail in your monthly seed to 7401 Gulf Freeway, Houston, Texas, 77017. Thank you in advance for partnering with Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries, and we look forward to taking the kingdom to the world with you.